everyone. Welcome to The Experience Pod, where we focus on emerging technologies, trends, and their impact on the Nigerian and African business landscape. My name is Emeka Chime, Associate Director of Tax Services here at PwC Nigeria. As we all know, the world of journalism is undergoing a technological revolution as we speak. The profession has changed dramatically over the years, all thanks to the internet, which has been the biggest disruptor of the media environment, um, with newspaper circulations declining. The internet, with its vast web of information, has opened up new sources of content for journalists to explore and report on. But perhaps the most intriguing development is the use of AI, artificial intelligence, by news organizations like the Associated Press and the Los Angeles Times in areas such as news gathering, production, distribution, and you know, what have you. One of the main applications of AI in news reporting is in the field of automated journalism, which involves, you know, using algorithms to automatically generate news stories based on data and other inputs. For example, um, we hear that the Associated Press uses an AI tool called Automated Insights to generate thousands of earnings reports per quarter. AI can also be used to analyze large data sets and identify trends and patterns that might not be immediately apparent to human analysts. For example, the LA Times uses an AI tool called Falcon, interesting name, to analyze crime data and identify patterns that can help reporters identify and report on emerging trends in crime. So we see these very useful areas that AI helps. These AI programs are capable of generating automated content, tagging digital text, and even reformatting articles for maximum readability. While technology has certainly brought some of some incredible advancements in the field of journalism, it will never replace the need for talented and experienced reporters. From breaking news to local events and public policy forums, journalists play a vital role in keeping us informed and engaged with the world around us. So while we may marvel at the wonders of technology, the importance of the human element in the world of journalism is critical for the human feel. After all, it takes human touch to capture the nuances and complexities of events and, you know, kind of com convey them in, in a compelling way. In its relatively brief time on the airwaves so far, Arise News has established itself as a leading voice in the Nigerian media landscape. The channel's broadcasting style is characterized by intellectual rigor and the strong personalities of its commentators and presenters such as Charles and Yagolo, our own Rotus who's here with us, right? Rufai Oseni and um, Dr. Ruben Abati. Arise News distinguishes itself via its global and sophisticated perspective of its news, extensive business news, strong online presence, leveraging its platform in reaching the younger audience. In order to understand the disruptive effects of technology in the newsroom and begin to envisage what the future of journalism looks like. We are pleased to welcome Aroture Odiri, a news anchor at Arise News for the Global Business Reports, as well as a business radio broadcaster with Smooth 98.1 FM to join us on the Experience Pod. Rotus, it's very nice to be with you here today. Uh, Mecca, it's a pleasure. Thank you guys uh, for having me. You guys are doing some great work with your, with your you. report at PwC. Thank you. Thank you. That's what the PwC experience is all about. Indeed. Um, maybe I'll start by saying I'm a big fan of your work. And um, yeah, it's, it's a big honor sitting here with you personally. I'm and humbled. I'll just say, how, how, how does it feel, you know, to be interviewed? I know. You know, when you're always doing the <laughs> doing interview, the interview. I mean, how does it feel? Yeah, it's, it's a bit surreal, yeah, because it's, you know, I'm on the other side. Right. Um, but look, I'm humbled that, you know, you guys uh, watch, right. watch the show. We, okay. we have a, you know, a responsibility to the public to right. give them news as it happens and be factual and balanced. And so, you know, it's great to be here. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Appreciate Absolutely. It a lot. And you guys are doing such a great job. <laughs> Thank you. Right, so let's start with some background 
For those who may not be familiar with you, uh, Mr. Aruturi, can you tell me if I'm getting the pronunciation right? Yeah, you are, yeah. So it's uh, Aru and then the number two and a ray of sunlight. Aru nice. Ture, there you go. Nice, yeah. nice. <laughs> I wish I had, you know, such explanation for my name, Emeka. <laughs> um, but I'll think of something. I can only think of car at the end. <laughs> at the end I'll yeah. look for something for Eme later. <laughs> um, so in a few sentences, yeah. can you tell us about yourself? You have a decade's worth of experience as a research analyst. What spurred you to join Arise News? Emeka, it was complete luck, me even getting into journalism in the first place. Wow. Um, I came home, I think it was about 2010, uh, from the United States after being there for about 12 years. Wow. Um, and was, uh, have the, um, an internship, uh, NYSC, at wow. one of the financial services uh, companies here in, in Nigeria. And I was just in traffic and was listening to Smooth FM while they were doing their newspaper review. Started sending text messages and interacting because the traffic was so long and I'd just be sitting there for hours. And it just so happened that they were looking for reviewers of their paper review. So they, one day, this, well, while they were, the show was off air, they sent me a message saying, hey, we appreciate your insights and would you like to join us to review newspapers? And then there, you know, I now um, took over uh, Business Express, which funny enough was wow. hosted by one of your prior guests, Tunji Andrews, who I oh, think was on okay. the show, yeah, Interesting. on the pod uh, previously. So he mm. asked me if I wanted to take over. Mm. I did and then started getting paid for it. So that mm. was radio. From there, went to you know Naira Metrics, started writing for them as a chief marketing officer, okay. then business insider as an okay. editor of running teams in Lagos, uh, mm. Accra, and Nairobi. Mm. And then uh, Rise News just happened to be looking for a uh, business anchor for mm. the Global Business Report. Mm. And so um, Ugo Dre, who uh, heads Naira Metrics, made a recommendation. Wow. Mm. That's how that's how that's how, you, that's how the journey that's, started. That's how the journey that's, started. That's how the journey is going. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. I mean, from what you said, you've almost gone through like full circle right. in terms of print, radio, TV. Exactly. How does that all come together? In fact, what are like maybe the similarities or maybe dissimilarities between the different kinds of media, and how do you so, bring that together? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you're you're still having to be as factual as possible because right. you have an audience. Um, I guess there's less of an intimidation factor with um, print and radio because mm. your audience cannot see you, right? right. With, right. with radio, they can hear you. Right. Um, and with print, they're just reading what you're writing. Yeah. Television, they can see you. So you've yes. got to know what you're talking about. So there's, you know, there's a bit of, if you're not, if you're new to it, there's a bit of stage fright. Mm. But as we've been told, if you know your mm. facts, you've done your research, mm. you're doing the same thing. So mm. with me, I only cover business. Mm. What I do on radio overlaps with television, mm. okay. whereby if inflation comes out today, I'm reporting inflation mm. on radio, I'm reporting inflation on television. Mm. And so that, it, it mends together. But then the, the, the research, the back work, it, it's a lot. <laughs> so you can get for all of them. For all of them, but you yeah. know, if you have to enjoy what you do. What's the saying? If you yeah. love what you do, you never work a day in your life, right? Oh, so interesting, interesting. That, that helps with the fatigue. Very good Everyone message to my well. PwC colleagues. Please love what you do. <laughs> <laughs> so you never work okay, a day in your life, your like life. he said. Um, but I just keep thinking about whether one, you know, type of, you know, media, if you will, involves more rigor, involves more inputs. Because I just think about writing, yeah. right? And maybe this is just me thinking okay. about somebody that has to sit down, write and everything, and then goes to an editor or whomever. Yeah. Is, do we have that kind of rigor in, you know, other... Or is it is one easier? Well, so so there's there's it they, it interlocks, right? Right. There's a, it, you have what's called straps at the bottom of your screen mm. when you are reporting something on television. Mm -hmm. That has to be written. The mm. grammar has to be on point, okay. and it okay. has to be in fact summarized. If you have something long, you have to summarize it. Mm. For print, you are writing and reporting what's mm. been happening. You have to have your opening paragraph, the body, mm. the conclusion. You've got to be concise depending right. on what you're mm. reporting. Radio. You're doing more speaking, like we're speaking on this pod right. now. But for me, that covers business, or anyone else that is reporting sports politics, mm. you still have to have done some research. But to your question, the mm. writing is more in the print and also for television to present what it is that you're okay. putting forward. So that's got to come together. But most of the writing, of course, is going to be happening on, on print. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. Thanks. Thanks for yeah. that. Um, so we researched you. Oh, you did? Yeah, we okay, did. We okay. did. I mean, so, and a curious glance at your LinkedIn, we noticed your inclination towards 
um, helping brands create content to showcase their products and services. Right. Can you tell us how you do this? Yeah, well, I mean, now that I've joined, all right, that, that was a past life and right. that was when I had a little more time. But okay. no, I feel that brands have to make a connection with customers on a conversational level, right? Mm. I have a big belief that word of mouth is the best way mm. that, you, that news spreads and also that um, if you want brand uh, identity with customers, mm. that's the best way because it's the most authentic, which mm. is word of mouth because it's mm. one person having a conversation with another person mm. and telling them about an experience that they've had. Mm. I traveled here. I mm. read this. Mm. I bought this. Mm. You should try it too. Mm. Oh, I saw this movie. True. True. So I, the, what I did, at least that when I was working in content creation with brands mm. was to tell them, look, we have to distill what it is that you're trying to sell mm. to a conversation level. So mm. when, you know, I know we'll get to podcasts maybe mm. later on, but the podcast that I created for different brands or mm. little dramatized um, sales pitches right. was always ground in an environment where two mm. people are having lunch mm. or at a bus stop talking mm. or and then you slip in your, mm. your your call to action or your brand identity there in the middle of it. Interesting. So at a very organic um, yeah, level. Yeah, I, I think that's the mm. most the best way to to, to connect with yeah. your with your potential customers and also okay. to, to sell your your brand to them it's, it's that organic organic growth interesting there. so yeah. it sounds like a, a lot of work you know to yeah. be a content creator in that it regard is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so how do you um, balance the need to deliver accurate and timely news you know, with the pressure to attract and retain viewers, right? So the latter is dependent on the former, yeah? If oh, you are, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. If we really, whether it's Smooth FM, whether it's Arise TV um, or any media organization, you've, I know there is a, there's a rush to be first, to get yeah. the breaking news out yeah. there, but mistakes tend to be made when right. that happens, right? Mm. So um, if you are, you know, if you are accurate with your news, if you are truthful, mm. if you are balanced, if you are not swaying one way or mm. the other, depending on what you are presenting, whether it's politics or, mm. or for my field, business, mm. I deal with numbers, I deal with, you're a tax mm. guy, so, yeah. you know, yeah, so you, you know what that's like as far as being accurate with your mm. analysis. So if you do that and you get a reputation for being factual, balanced and you know thorough with your work, you will attract the viewers yes. and you can, and then you can take liberties with, um, being more like this morning on the morning show where I started introducing PDD quotes in my business analysis because mm. he was talking about how money is tied mm. to everything you know so nice. you, can, you can yeah you, you can I enjoy rap and yeah. so on and using pop culture references but okay. first I have to do my work make sure right. it's thorough accurate and then you and can then you can then spice, yeah, it up. spice it up a little bit so when okay. you do that the, 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 the customer yes, the I, like, I, like, I, I really like what you said and it resonates with me about how the latter is dependent on the former yeah, because yeah. even here within PwC and advert check right I <laughs> lead the tax thought leadership team mm. here at PwC and most times there's always a rush to be the first out there right so when there's a tax development you want to be the first to publish yeah. but sometimes you might want to think okay how do I analyze this? how do I you know extract insights right. and make it maybe more fun more readable more relatable to to the audience and then you might not be the first mm. but you find out that you're able to retain you know your exactly. base and, and and i need to say i'm a big fan of tax folks because taxes are they are complex they are hard yeah, yeah. so uh, mecca you're doing the lord's work well done yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, you are too you are too so, so good one right so um after the pandemic hit the world, yeah. the number of internet users have increased tremendously. And um, most education, work, and other communication are now done online, right? Um, there's about 5.07 billion internet users in the world as of March, um, many of them young people. This has spurred the growth of digital journalism and has allowed for more timely reporting, wider reach, more interactive and multimedia content. It has also disrupted operating models of the print media, I think. I think the print media is probably one of the most impacted with a sharp decline in readership. Do you think the decline of the print media has affected the quality and diversity of news coverage? Mm. Um, everybody just wants to read the blog. Everybody just wants to, you know, you know, just get the clicks. You know, right. do people really, has it affected the print media? Now you see there's a strong question. Right. There's some context to this, yeah. Mm. In the West, in the United States, there was a, the US Census Bureau put out some data between 2002 and 2020, mm. the impact on print journalism. So it was, revenues were down 50%. Your periodic journal, periodic um, uh, publishing items like magazines and so mm. on, that was down 40%. Mm. Uh, discs, video, physical video down about 88%, almost wow. collapsed, right? Wow. So there were definitely, there was impact there. 
Nigeria is is a, a little peculiar. yes, you know. There, <laughs> I can there's, imagine. There's some con. There's some. It's it's a little different, and that is you have to now question. First of all, the data is a problem. Okay. You can yeah, circulation of um, prints in the United States. Um, you, you can, can track. You, you can, can track. measure. But here in Nigeria, it's, it's, it is hard to do that. Right. And there is also an issue of readership mm. culture. You mm. just said it yourself. People just want to jump on and read a blog, mm. read just how many mm. people really want to open up a newspaper mm. and go through information there. I mean, mm. you still see individuals gathered around um, newsstands. Vendor stands. Vendors. And yeah, yeah, yeah. They are just in. They are reading for free. Thank you, sir. That is where I was going, right? So so they read for free. Ah, bros, when you yeah. finish past the paper, one paper can be passed around 10 or yeah. 15 people. So, so, and then, you know, there's the fact that, what, broadband penetration in Nigeria is about 40%. Mm. The, in, you know, there were plans to get it to 75. I know mm. the, you know, incoming government wants to look at 90 or 95%. Mm. So broadband penetration is really low. I know that teledensity is high and you've got more phones around mm. and so on. But... In the rural areas, mm. in the, outside your Lagos, your Abuja, maybe your Port Harcourt, there's still a lot of people who depend on prints, and there's still a lot of people who, who listen. So, yeah, mm. so the traditional um, measures through which, or channels through which people digest um, mm. uh, news, is still there in Nigeria now. Okay. Do we have the data to say that that's not true? We don't. Right? Mm. So, so it's it's a, it's an issue to where. In your urban centers, your your Lagos and your Abuja's and mm. so on, with young people, more people on their mobile phones, yes, they are digesting content mm. and maybe re- it's reduced. Mm. But for the rural areas, I'm not sure. And then with older Nigerians, my father yes, still true. reads newspapers, physical newspapers, right. my uncles, my aunts, mm. and so on and so forth. The younger people, I, I, I will not mm. lie, I haven't bought a newspaper in, a while. <laughs> in quite a while. I digest everything online. And, mm. you know, and by the way, I should say that, you know, this day newspaper is the sister publication of Arise TV. So oh, okay. I have insights with the publishers that are there with, okay. you know, exchange stories and so on. Okay. And the, ch- the challenges that the print media is facing is still the fact that they have mm. to import items used to publish. Mm. The logistics of distributing those papers across mm. the country is there, mm. the cost matter. But with respect to the internet, the internet has reduced overhead costs whereby okay. before a news publishing a house would have to bring everyone together in mm. a physical place you type up your story mm. physically go and take it to your editor to, to mm. review now they work from home mm. they use the internet to set mm. their stories and they email them put them on mm. whatsapp and so on so they reduce costs but in terms of the issue of readership and whether it has actually declined mm. that is for nigeria for yeah, us here that is still up in the air still up in the air it is yeah i like what you said about the differences between the urban and the rural area i mean thinking about even maybe use of radios i right. know radio is very popular still, especially yeah. in rural areas yeah. right yeah. With people carrying their small Thank radios you. and trying yeah. to and then even i don't know thinking just up in my head around the impact of traffic on mm-hmm. radio because many people that's how i got into here, media exactly <laughs> yeah, right. so i can i can imagine that some of of Nigeria's peculiarities will actually, you know, drive, you know, the um, the numbers, you mm. know, with regards uh, media. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Really? Um, I was going to ask a question that I forgot. Hopefully, it comes come back, back to my head. Right? Yeah, yeah, great, great. <laughs> um, so, do you think? Okay, well, um, with this in mind, uh, what do you think sets print media apart from other forms of media? Um, how can we leverage these strengths in print media to stay competitive in today's media landscape? Okay, now for Nigeria, for print media to remain competitive, you have to think about where print media is coming from. Mm. The paper mills used to be big in this right. country. And you you know, but now today, I think the number is in the last five years, Nigeria has spent about 1.6 uh, trillion. Wow, wrote us with the numbers. Uh, yeah, like well, you, on, been, on, you know, <laughs> you're almost the Peter uh, Ovi of, of media, right? So we should <laughs> so go verify these numbers. We don't need to verify. Yeah, verify. Go verify. Yes, they are verified. Yes, they are verified. Nice, nice, nice. They're, nice. they're factual. Okay, great. So 1.6 trillion in the last five years importing paper mm. products into okay. this country, and you have the um, the. Um, uh, Companies that are deter- that de- that are dependent on prints having right. to import so much, their mm. costs are, are, are a lot. I think it's, 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 mm. these came from the Bureau of, uh, of mm. Statistics. So, so for the print uh, industry to remain competitive, mm. you've got to improve manufacturing here. You've got yeah. to reduce their costs because yeah. what they're still facing is a high 
cost barrier. Right. What the internet has done again, as far as you know, assisting them in being competitive. Yeah, mm. distribution, right? Right. But as far as the costs of mm. getting those items to print, it's a lot higher than your radio. Yes. So higher. Yes. For TV, you got to pay for cameras and you got to pay for equipment, which yes. is like important and so on and yeah. so forth. So Nigeria still comes down to an infrastructure issue that's yeah. affecting different yeah. sectors. Yeah. Very, very interesting. And I also just kind of think about how because going into the costs and you know the issues nigeria has with forex and oh, you know you know i mean we're going to go into very you know how we can actually do a lot more in our manufacturing oh, yeah. because why should we be importing papers we have forests we have you know you know all exactly, these things you know? in the whole value chain to help produce this Indeed. but um just you know listening to what you said something came to my mind in terms of the actual operating model yeah. of print media right yeah and compared to where technology has taken us mm. where things you know you put them online and you know the revenue that the print media guys would have earned from actually selling these newspapers yeah you you can't sell i guess so okay maybe subscription so how do you i'm just trying to think about yeah. how they've kind of substituted you know the money that the people pay at the vendor stands yeah now with the internet so yeah. probably subscription i don't know if i'm answering the question no, no, yeah, yeah, but yeah, 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 sales and, and things like that so Thank i just you. want to understand how you, that you, works you, you've hit it i was talking to, to um the folks at, at this day news again so thanks that that is the advantage i have with the insight there hmm. the costs of producing a newspaper right is anywhere from 2500 to 3000 naira how many excuse one. me how many one one how much are they sold at the most ex this day has one of the highest costs about 300 or 400 naira for a paper um on on the weekend your punch your business day 253 so think no, about no, that please pause uh, yeah. I, 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 I don't get what you just said you said to produce one is between you 2, didn't say 250 2500 2, to 3000 you sell, you sell I, for 300 thank you so wow. where do you make up the difference wow. because you are importing right. everything that the imp that it takes to produce your paper mm. so it's very expensive and then now mm. think about this you are distributing in or rather printing maybe in one particular state lagos you mm. want to get your paper to Kano, mm. to Imo State, to Zamfara, to mm. everywhere else. How are you going to do that? Right. 95 to 96 percent of goods move by road mm. uh, in Nigeria. So you now have to have the extra cost of moving. So the costs are high. So mm. it's ads. That is how papers yeah. are able to stay afloat. It mm. is ads. And so here's another thing uh, to, your, to your point. For the digital arm, where papers mm. will now have a social media and they're mm. online, they have websites mm. and so on mm. and so forth. Digital ads have helped, but mm. that is how they are bridging mm. the, the gap, the, the gap mm. because it's it's really expensive. Mm. Until we domesticate the production process, they're still going to be uh, uh, underwater, at least for print. Interesting. For print, for print media. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for that insight. I've been thinking really about how that works. So we really need to, like you said, domesticate mm -hmm. the production process yeah. by nigeria to grow the naira there I you go how that's, that's it, but you're exactly along, right something along those lines right <laughs> you're exactly right okay so um the according to statista right about 82 million people listened to podcasts in 2021 um what role do you see podcasts playing in the future of news and how are you leveraging this medium to reach new audiences okay so again we've got that western divide with right here at home um overseas you are seeing um podcasts uh grow as mm. you just put with the, with the data and they are they are they are more fuel to the mm. information waves in order to back up what you're hearing on the news mm. and also with the other forms of media channels so they're mm. they're, they're definitely growing okay. and they're they're definitely have a role to be and expanding in popularity right now they're expanding here too, mm. right? But, but mm -hmm. there is this this income drives a lot in this okay. country. Okay, um, even the newspapers, your two hundred and fifty naira to three hundred, four hundred naira newspaper. How many people? It's still a lot. I, I imagine. Well, again, here's the yeah. insight I got from yeah. our, our folks at this day. They sell more on the island. Yeah, this is for Lagos, your Victoria Island, your Ikoi, because that's where the more yeah, the Americans who disposable income, right, disposable amen, income amen. to the pay for that. How many your your average in the rural areas? How many people can afford to pay a deal yes. Monday through Friday yes. buying a newspaper every day of yes. four hundred naira, three hundred? Yes. So yes. income is there. So now, when you bring that to podcasts, podcasts are growing in popularity, mm. but. Um, the, the question now is whether it's long form or mm. short form mm. because of data costs, right. right? How many people can afford to listen to a podcast for mm. an hour and a half, two hours mm. or so on and so forth? Mm. Um, but it's there. I mean, especially with our youth. Our yes. youth, they are more yes. 
Upwardly mobile, they're using mm. phones, they are being more social media mm. savvy, more internet savvy. So it's there, but mm. that divide, as that income divide is not allowing yeah. podcasts to get the kind of growth that they need yes. to. It will get there, but then the economy's got to grow. Yes. People have to be more, making more money. Right. Um, the telcos are cleaning out, so. Mm-hmm. The, by this one, I, I'm, I mentioning, can imagine, yeah. <laughs> I'm mentioning the telcos. Yes. The telcos, mm-hmm. their contribution to GDP is increasing. Mm-hmm. So they're they are loving what, they, what is right. going on. Mm-hmm. But for, for podcasts to grow, mm-hmm. there's a foothold here as yes. far as us in Nigeria. But you know, for now, I think um, because I again for content creation when I was with Naira Metrics, I did mm. create some contact uh, podcast for them. Right. It was a matter of okay, how long should this be so that we can reach as yes. many people as possible? Yes. But the okay. channels through the digital channels did help to you know proliferate them across. You know, so interesting, interesting, yeah. and that's kind of making me think about how long this podcast should be. <laughs> yeah, but let's see how it's that well works. to do people that you know <laughs> that will consume this. Yeah, consume PDP, no, we're trying PDP, to reach the ordinary people there. on the street. Yeah, so, yeah, but sure. let's see for sure. Um, and the relationship between traditional news media uh-huh. and technology companies has evolved significantly in recent years, with many news outlets now relying on platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Google for distribution and traffic. While this has provided new opportunities for news organizations to reach wider audiences, it has also created new challenges and tensions in the industry. How do you see the relationship between traditional news media and technology companies evolving in the future? It kind of, in my head, almost gives a lot of power to the technology companies, so like the intermediary in the mm. middle yeah. between the users and the news companies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what opportunities and challenges do you think this presents for, for both parties? The, the main challenge is one of compensation. You remember the case- Compensation to who now? For the, so the, you've got the publisher, you've got the platform. Right. So the publisher is the news generating outlets, right. the media mm. outlets um, that are your, your newspapers and so on. And right. then you've got the, the platform. Tech platforms that okay. are proliferating them. Makes but sense. the thing is, the tech platforms are taking content from the publishers. Mm. They are generating clicks, mm. selling ads mm. uh, from folks who come to read, and mm. they are keeping all that money for themselves. Mm. So you see what happened in Australia in 2021, where they had that media bargaining law, mm. where Australia forced Meta, uh, parent company of Facebook, Facebook. and, and, mm. and Alphabet, parent company of Google, mm. that you must compensate the publishers for the news that mm. you are taking from their platforms mm. and putting on yours. Yeah, but uh, that's me- surprising. So you're saying, you know, they never used to compensate or how? There wasn't, there wasn't. So, oh, I mean, you, so I mean, you can have a platform. A news outlet can have its own Facebook page okay, and can have its own, it. you know, okay. outlets, right? With, through which it puts its, oh, its content. But you still have. I mean, check online any, you, any mm. news, breaking news. You will see it. Yes, everywhere, yes, right? Yes, and proliferate yes. on this platform. Mm. So Australia said, look, and they're claiming that it has worked in that Facebook mm. now has to compensate publishers mm. through which it takes, whose content it takes. So going forward, the challenges will be the fact that you've got revenue that is low, falling mm. for a number of these publishers mm. and how they can cr- come to agreements with the platforms, mm. revenue, revenue sharing agreements mm. where they can get that. Now, you mentioned, sub- mm. you mentioned subscriptions. Subscriptions are popping up. Mm. In fact, for my job, to do my job and mm. be accurate um, on Arise, mm. I have subscriptions with Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal, Financial mm. Times. Does, does Arise pay for those for you? No, I pay for it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Arise does take care of me in other ways. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm expected yeah, no, to be no, able no, to, just, to, just stay, to stay yeah. up to date with that. But I make, took that extra step. Yeah. I mean, there's free news. There's free business mm-hmm. news out there. But for me to get the most up-to-date, yeah, accurate. accurate business news, at it's, it's, it's hitting. And that's the reason right. why I have my audience because they mm. come to me for the latest news. Mm. I have to pay those online. And the reason why the Bloombergs and the Wall Street Journals and the New York Times and all mm. these other guys erected those paywalls was because internet decimated Print. Okay. I mean, I know the Wall Street Journal is still physically um, there. Mm. I was in Davos to cover the World Economic Forum, mm, and they were general. handing out free copies of the Wall Street Journal just to advertise free. on okay. in Switzerland, right there in Davos. Wow. Right. Mm. So that is the cost that they have to take in order mm. to try to get there. So mm. they erected paywalls to try to to make up for that income. Mm. But I had an interview with a gentleman on my show, and he said that paywalls. The downside is that you are limiting the amount of news that is being distributed. Yeah. Because if in this room only you and i are the ones that can afford to get on a paywall mm. and subscribe and get news what happens mm. to everybody to else rest. that doesn't have mm. that income so now no, over- but sorry to interrupt go ahead, you right go ahead. is that yeah. not just similar to the regular news where you know i still have to pay to buy so you know? you're, are we talking about regular news with respect to fiscal no, I'm papers just saying like pre- yeah, 
yeah, physical papers. I'm yeah. just thinking, it's not like say, so. So, but see, the, the divide online news used to be they used to be free. Okay, you could got go it, got it. on I see the, where you're coming from. But now yeah. everyone is erecting a paywall. Now, if mm. we get to a stage where everybody has an online paywall, and I understand the mm. revenue challenges, they have to stay alive. They have to mm. pay. imagine a news. Um, outlet that has mm. broadcasters and journalists around the world. Right. You're paying for their feeding. You're paying for them to fly around. Yeah. Where's the money coming Where's from? Money coming from? <laughs> <laughs> so, so that, so that medium again. Back to your question: between mm. the publishers and the platform, there's got to be some kind of synergy, mm. revenue share, Sharing. where yeah, one person is not the platform isn't mm. ripping off the yes. uh, the publisher. Yes, I like how you said it. You wanted to say one person is not ripping off the other, but you decided <laughs> to be specific. Yes. The platform, because it's most times the platform ripping off the publisher, and I imagine the platforms. Because they collect data, they are the. I mean, they can monetize data in different ways, oh, sell yeah. data to other people. It's just interesting times that we yeah. live in with technology. Uh, Jeff Bezos of Amazon owns the Washington Post, right? Oh. I mean, you've got, you've got. So, so that brings me to, got, and, and maybe I should because what you just yeah. said is because yeah. I was reading one time about the concept of of you know data neutrality and net neutrality and all these things yeah. right so if jeff bezos of amazon owns the washington post right why can't he configure maybe amazon if amazon is one of the outlets you know that the newspaper reaches people yeah such that you know you charge the other guys higher yeah right and i mean the other publishers so that you know it's easier for your own business to kind of reach people and generate more traffic okay. than the other publishers so it's kind of and we know these are not there are a handful mm. of these big media companies yeah. so just imagine all of them owning their own publishing outlets mm. and they're able to channel the news they want you know at the expense of maybe factual news i'm just saying it would be a problem i mean right so, so when bezos when that when the news broke that he was buying the washington post people were like ah it's just going to be mm. a le he's a left-wing guy he lives mm. in california the independence of the paper was now came into question, question people so he i mean the man is hands off you won't mm. see or hear there is a need to make those entities yeah. um separate and mm. but it was a trigger for me to say jeff bezos and amazon mm. owns amazon doesn't own the washington post it's mm. jeff bezos that owns oh, the post right yeah. so but you can see because of the tech <laughs> yeah, platform yeah, and everything yeah, we're yeah, now yeah. conflicting mm. them together so they have to be separate entities mm. the washington post has to remain re, re, you know mm. keep up its integrity and so on mm. and so forth mm. their separation has to be be there that entity mm. the, the fourth estate uh, mm. uh, medium as the media has to mm. remain there so if tech companies all take over then ah that's <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be an be a, yeah, yeah. Be a problem right problem. right so problem. google's announcement in 2022 that it will block third-party cookies in chrome and for those of you who don't know what cookies is because i was talking to one of my friends who <laughs> has been trying to lose weight and he's like what's all these cookies that the systems are offering me i'm on a diet here right <laughs> so cookies are for i mean i think they're like I guess scripts that help you know generate or get information from the users That's correct. you know for for future purposes yeah. anyway so Google's announcement that it will block third party cookies in Chrome browsers within the next 2 years has sent shockwaves through the advertising industry crumbling to find new ways to reach their audiences content publishers are excited about the prospects of holding on to their coveted first party data you know so how do you see the relationship between data privacy and the future of the digital economy and what role do you think you know publishers and advertisers have in in shaping this future I think that privacy is being eroded. Uh, if I'm to use a, a non-publishing uh, example, Google Maps, every month mm. uh, I get an email from Google Maps mm. telling me where I've been, right? <laughs> Using, <laughs> telling uh, me where, every time I've used the map to tell me where I'm going, yeah, right? Yeah. There's a joke there with married couples, we'll yeah. get into that, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but it, it essentially I get an email and right. it tells me you went from this point to this point at this time, mm. I mean, itemizing, now I willfully to use the right. application mm. to tell. So, so it, with the third party issue, you know that of course, there's the first party cookies and then third party. Third mm. party cookies are attached to a domain that you are not using. So mm. I'm on somewhere, I don't know, shopping for ties oh, or something and a third okay. party person is attaching a, a, a oh, tracker. Okay. So this is Google now, I mean, they've been postponing this um, phasing away of the uh, third party cookies. They mm. said they would do it in 2022, then 2020. Now they said they pushed it back to 2024. And they've come mm. up with this thing, I think it's a sandbox APIs, the mm. application programming interfaces where Google wants to 
phase out the third party co- uh, mm. cookies and then bringing a more tiered system where they mm. are more in control of who is tracking user data mm. but they it, they have been detractors who have said that look google you are the one who you know it was the fox guarding the head house essentially oh, okay. because google profited from this right, right? they made and money then, yes facebook yeah. all these folks i think that there's a trade off to where the more we are involved in online activity. Our, our privacy is, is getting eroded. As mm. far as what the publishers can do, um, <laughs> the thing is they are, they are incentivized to sell our data yes. so they can get clicks yes, and make money. Absolutely. So the sandbox API thing from um, Google is an initiative where they want to re- try and remove it, uh, remove third party trackers mm-hmm. and make it only you know first party trackers, uh, first party mm. cookies, excuse me. Will it work? Um, You're not. I, I'm not. I, uh, look, uh, I think our, our privacy is Rose gone. Rose is pessimistic about, <laughs> about the, this the, working. The, but, the privacy mm. is is mm. is gone. Now look, there's a flip side to this. When you are a news medium, you're putting out news. You've got trolls who mm. come on and say you know things that are insulting. There's bullying mm. and so mm. on. Now the fact that the Googles, the Facebooks, and so on are more you know, getting more data about who is online mm. and able to oh, say whether see, it is I this see, person. I see where you're going with that. Right, okay. so everybody, there's more mm. identity management now. Yeah. Mm. So the, the, the trade-off is you're eroding your privacy, right. but, but then, you know who the trolls are. Mm, yeah, you're mm, getting more mm, better at clamping them down. Mm, mm, if a crime is committed, you can track online mm, activity. Mm, I know that, you know, uh, you know, as far as getting data on phones, you might need a court order and things mm, like that, but mm, there is a trade-off. And unfortunately, mm. I think the more we delve into the online space, yes, the, more the more our privacy, privacy is eroded. going to be. Yeah. Like, Google Maps thing. The first time I saw it, I was like, "What?" Yeah. You know, and you know, but you know, I'm still single, so I don't have those issues oh, yet. Oh wow, interesting. Over time, you know, uh, before couples, couples mm. who want <laughs> look. Anyway, look, th- we're just we're going down that yes, road. We're going there, <laughs> and we going saw what you did there, there, right? Telling us you're still single. I really don't know why you did that, but it's okay. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Thanks. Um, I was just kidding, by the way. And so we're going into emerging technology yeah. now, Ruto. So yeah. thinking about the never-ending malicious cycle of fake news, which I think you almost, you know, touched on just now. Um, blockchain can be used to permanently store and track records of online transactions, digital communications. Um, this information within the blockchain system can easily be authenticated and tracked back to its source, right? Making it easier for readers to authenticate stories, um, you know, that can help curb the spread of fake news. Is this a technology which maybe you already use, Arise already uses, or is this a technology that's prevalent in Nigeria? And I mean, I mean, it probably doesn't have to be blockchain, but is there any technology-based system that we kind of use to test the authenticity of news hmm. in, in Nigeria? No, I mean, we, blo- we, we haven't started using blockchain we're exploring it as right. arise um a number of other news mediums are but i mean it's it's still very nascent here as far right. as authentication look we all use whatsapp mm. i mean we just came off an election mm. uh, who, who was authenticating yeah. the, i mean come on yeah. Yeah. i know and again meta is the pri- is the parent mm. they have they have new um checks where the, you can tell a message has been forwarded and and all all and yeah. but it is still the responsibility still falls on us to authenticate news mm. ai the things that ai is doing right now there was that picture of the pope in a puffer jacket with yes, his gold chain so real then like uh, macron apparently in a protest where he mm. also looked like he was being attacked yes. donald trump just got indicted mm. there was a picture of police tackling him mm. they were all fake right mm. and the thing is it, 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 i get i get tons of messages Rosos, is this real mm. i just heard this is this authentic mm. Can you mm. so it, there's an opportunity mm. for the media to step up, mm. do its research work, mm. and be able to verify. So what I would do, you have to just do the work. Where mm. how many news sites reported the Pope in a puffer jacket? Yeah. You won't see it anywhere. It's only yeah. on that particular mm. source. How many news sites saw mm. a Macron getting mm. attacked in a protest? And by the mm. way, just for the, uh, your uh, viewers and listeners, mm. Macron raised the um, retirement, retirement age, age. I saw in that. France. He pushed through a executive order. He bypassed Parliament wow. and really angered mm. people. Mm. So if you are a French worker mm. and you are getting to the age of retirement mm. he's basically saying that you have to work longer, longer. before you get mm. so that's what the protests are for so mm. then this ai generated mm. image had him being attacked or escaping mm. people it never happened he never mm. was never there mm. but it is being circulated around the french public yes. generating anger like yes they should attack yes. him will lynch him so yes you know we we, we got to be careful so, but so, so essentially yeah. right you have to do your own force yeah for us here yeah. you got to so do so there's it. no sort of 
or, or maybe this is asking the question in a different way. Is yeah. there like any NBC mandated, you know, penalty, for example, that you don't do your fact checking properly and you oh. report something? Oh, uh, How does that work? Oh, no, we've, we've been fined. Oh, uh, okay. We, there was that big news of uh, channels getting fined about what they're yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. the, the NBC is still doing its work, right? right? Um, and there are questions around whether that's been politicized mm. or but there's a regulator in place, the Broadcasting mm. Commission. Now, for if, here's the thing: if you don't do your work and you let out, um, you know, news that is mm. not fact-checked, mm. you will lose your audience okay. because the moment you lose that trust is the yes. biggest thing for yes, media. Absolutely. Yeah, and in fact, it was in the news a couple of days ago. There is a new. Um, commission they're putting forward now mm. where people can forward complaints about media houses and what they put forward oh, now okay. i hope that's not abused mm -hmm, where if you just mm -hmm. because you don't like what's yes, being reported you now go there yeah. yeah but i mean specifically to your question mm. in terms of being able to say is this fake news or mm. not we're not yeah, we're, we're not, not there yet yeah you will still have to we still in the media have to do our do jobs work do you know verify mm. make sure this is factual and then present what is real mm. to um mm. the audience i mean look for example there was um i won't mention the parties but right. you know well you probably know who it is mm. they, they they were there was an uh, on-air mm. interview mm. where um the guests on our platform mm. said that joe biden had congratulated bola metinibu for mm. winning mm. now the state this, this u.s state department did right. acknowledge he won mm. but biden but never congratulate and people who were watching were like okay biden congratulated him so yeah, we now that's to, not you know, the tv so if, you see i mean uh, so okay. he, he, i can see where it gets tricky for you yeah because you're the one asking the questions and somebody's saying that and yes yeah, and so you have to fact check, check in real time so we don't wow. there's no tech that can tell you yes. yeah, yeah. 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 But the thing will go off yeah. and say you know even during our debates we held a lot of debates for delta gubernatorial thing we had a fact checker who was sitting down right there, there having to go through what the stats and numbers they're putting mm. out or the things they're saying so it's still a manual it's process a manual for process, now the tech, yeah. the tech through blockchain and so on might get mm. there but it's, a, it's an issue of where when a fact is presented online mm. the the details have to be authenticated mm. against something as a benchmark whether right. and then so it's still it still yeah. makes sense we're still I imagine. There. yeah and i also imagine it's very tough when it's you know real time live yeah right yeah. just imagine you know saying something that's not factual so i mean, immediately have to rebut that exactly so i know? would have had to have known who all, who yes. all, how many people have congratulated yes. the president elect yes. to be able to say all as he's talking, you know, be, it's, yeah. it's not easy, man, and it's, it's live. Not. It's not. <laughs> it's well, live but maybe television. quick messages to all the African moms out there who like to forward WhatsApp messages. Because I think those guys need to also fact check. I oh, receive messages from my mom, oh, my and I'm like, goodness. oh, mommy, you've come again. Where is this from? You know, and and they take it at face value. At face it's value. True. Have you seen this? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Don't oh. travel to, oh, in your house, something is happening. Mommy, I'm in my house. You know, it's so interesting. It but really anyway, is. yeah, so um, we, we hope that, yeah, like you said, um, at some point, maybe technology can help us, or we can deploy technology in this part of the world to to help do fact checking. Mm. Um, and you know, the future is going to be really immersive. Um, a lot of companies are beginning to leverage on these emerging technologies in creating this immersive experience. I mean, we see what Meta is doing. Um, virtual reality is an exciting emerging technology that promises to revolutionize the way people consume news by immersing viewers in the middle of a new story virtual reality can create a deeper level of engagement and understanding than traditional forms of media how can news organizations like arise tv <laughs> create such you know virtual reality experiences that are accessible to its viewers ha. regardless of their physical and financial ah. limitations ah. and how do you ensure this technology is understandable you're already we, saying ah so uh, i feel like uh, i know where your answer okay, is going to come yeah. but let's let's hear so you let's see i mean we went from how many people can afford a 300 naira ah, paper ah, to now virtual to a headset ah. meta's headset that they just released ah. is 1500 dollars oh i mean how many people can afford that Right, and mm. I think I think the last time I was at the you hear your experience yeah. center. You you uh, PwC had a, yes, a yes, tech, yes. yeah. So mm. you experimented with VR, mm. uh, virtual mm. reality, and things like that. You all you know showed mm. that here, and so you guys are on the forefront as right. uh, as a business that is uh, you know on these trends. So mm. I, I you know I thank you guys for what you did and, mm. and putting it out there. But the it is costly. Yes, and it is. Meta, they are, Apple, Amazon, they're all trying to work with glasses that can condense that information mm -hmm, to mm -hmm, where you won't have to mm -hmm. wear a big headset because there's mm -hmm. been health issues with mm -hmm. wearing it for too long, mm -hmm. being hot and yeah. so on and so forth. So virtual reality for news, yeah, you're, you're right. 
well the, the pathway mm -hmm. is there um but the west is still figuring it out right. so you know the, that cost metric of mm -hmm. how you can get it to you know be affordable across the mm -hmm. board uh my mm -hmm. brother that's uh, is a long way are, to go we are a ways away yes, but yes. It, it's exciting and mm -hmm. you know, as far as immersive technology and what it would mean for news mm -hmm. who knows maybe you just news just be popping up in your face right, right on your headset mm -hmm. in the in the future so mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're gonna get there we're gonna yes, get there yes and it's interesting yeah. to see a lot of other things that that kind of immersive technology can do oh right? yeah in a holistic sense on digital innovation journalism would always be rooted in objectivity and spot-on storytelling um, and in trying to integrate you know vr ar experience into a larger picture like the metaverse um, do you believe that the metaverse will change the way audience consumes news if yes are you currently leveraging i mean you just said you were not yeah that was, now yeah, yeah. Um, but how do you think that the metaverse for example may change the way audience consumes news the the, the metaverse is really exciting i know there was a there was a concert a metaverse concert that was held oh yeah i, yeah. Saw, I saw that right yes. so now those you didn't need a virtual reality yeah headset. you just had to hold up your phone and you saw these augmented mm. uh, images and so on mm. and so forth so in terms of that real time mm. um the imagery and what what it can do it's mm. exciting it's mm -hmm. exciting and if that is the way that can you can allow you to bypass not having to get an expensive headset and so on mm -hmm. and so forth then that's definitely going to work and it's i mean i interviewed um a rapper who one of the first to perform in the metaverse and so on and so forth so in nigeria in nigeria yeah and it, it's, it's getting there um it's just a matter of time because look in, see again internet Broadband penetration is 40% here, right? The internet, we, we rely on so much. Mm. You need... The, the, the word network, do you know the word network in Nigeria is a pejorative? It's negative. If somebody yeah. says network, yes. you it means that you connect can't, it to negative. Right, you yes. couldn't connect to yes. it. But network in another country yes, just means positive. the network, right? Yeah, right. So uh -huh. it, it, it tells you where we yeah. are that, you know, mm. so so I'm, look at what happened with the cash redesign. Mm. Look at the pressure it put on banking apps. Mm. They were collapsing, you couldn't log mm. in. So mm. for us to reach that level where the metaverse is fluid and images are not breaking up and, you know, you're getting your virtual reality news in a clean mm. clear form you've with infrastructure it still comes down to infrastructure mm. we talked about infrastructure with paper and print and newspapers not having to import mm. stuff so the infrastructure has to be built up you yes. get the infrastructure yes. right all these things will, will yes. follow through yes you know? the infrastructure is still a big deal yeah for us here and you hit a very painful spot when you talked about banking apps because oh, i still have my money hung somewhere <laughs> one of the banks i'm not going to mention your name uh maybe off air anyway so i think now we're getting into well what we like to call the fun part oh ah, okay um yeah so Speaking of predictions, can you tell us what your last prediction that you got wrong is? Oh, yeah. oh that one's easy. The MPC, Monetary Policy Committee. Oh, okay. what I was mean, your prediction I about it? I predicted that they would hold at 17.5%, but okay. they hiked it to 18%. So that oh, one I got wow. wrong. Wow. And I got it wrong because month-on-month mm -hmm. -month inflation was decelerating. Year-on-year mm -hmm. -year was accelerating, mm -hmm. but um, I thought they would hold, but they are still mm -hmm. raising interest. Raising and that, that has a lot of impact in terms of loans, costs, okay. and so on. So, so that, that was the last prediction. So I, it's 18.5 now. As no, it's 18, it was 17. That's what okay, the, the okay, last... Okay, it was raised in, by 500. Yes, yeah, 50, ba uh, 50 basis points 50 from 17.5 to yeah. 18. Yeah, so okay. that's where we are now. But I thought that would keep it at 17.5. 17 so that was the last prediction I, I Oh, got, interesting. I got okay, so can you make another prediction here and we'll check in the ne next couple of months whether you were right okay or wrong. you know what yeah this uh, this is a fun one um yeah. well maybe not really fun because it's hitting our pockets fuel subsidies whether they will be removed uh in in june everybody get your pens yes, um, yes. is about to make a prediction yeah yeah, yeah. i am predicting i thought it would be removed right but the language now mm. of I don't think it will be removed mm. um, fully. Maybe at best it's be right. partially removed. He said right. he was going to yank it, mm. right? It was supposed to be yanked off entirely. Yeah. It was actually but supposed to be yanked a while ago. Last year, they yes, didn't. But then it was included in the budget up until June. Yeah, I mean, which coincidentally, you know, the past administration leaves, the new ones then have to, right. you know, tackle that burden. And, uh -huh. you know, so it's very interesting. But he's saying they will not be removed. That it won't be removed. They won't. And I support it being removed. I think the okay. fuel subsidies are a chain around Nigeria's neck. Right. It's incredibly expensive. 
we can't afford it. It's people who the, the big boys, the yes. Americans that drive their cars amen, and are amen. pumping fuel. Da, 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 and, da, and, and by the way, America being a big boy is not a prediction. It's reality. <laughs> it's, that's already <laughs> facts on the ground. So I predict they will not remove it. I wish it would be okay. bad, but I think they'll, they'll fall into pressure and not remove it. Okay, yeah. okay, interesting, interesting. Yeah. And we'll, 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 I mean, check that in the next couple of months. I hope they remove it. I like hope you so said, it's, it's I hope so too. something that has been weighing Nigeria down. But Indeed. I'm just thinking about the body language, like you said, is it not because we heard in the news a couple of weeks ago with the finance minister advising, mm. you know, the incoming administration to raise VAT, raise taxes. Yeah. Um, you know, just thinking about how that interacts with not removing. Anyway, it's, yeah, it's, I guess yeah, you. Yeah, but but yeah, let's see how it goes. Advising the next, the next, the next what guys you were coming. You see yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Interesting country. Interesting. You guys Very. are gonna have a lot of great podcasts. Uh, oh content. my days! We, just we can't being wait. in Nigeria. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, we can't wait. Um, so. What is one view that you have? Maybe you hold strongly to that view. Okay. Um, but for some reason, a lot of people, you know, disagree with you. Or maybe few people agree with you. Oh, ha. Okay. <laughs> I'm non-religious. I worship technology. I think technology is a god. Ooh. Yeah, that one gets me in trouble a lot of times. So, you know, we are a very religious nation, right? right? So people tend to think that. Right. So I feel that a tech, it's like magic, right? You yeah. before... I can send you an image yeah. through a phone. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's it, we're talking about VR. Yeah. We're talking about look at where we've come as humanity. Yeah. How is this? How is it not godly? How is it not, how yes. is it not spiritual? Oh how is days. it not the fact that you can do right. all these things right. and condense everything to a phone? Wi Fi. Yes. What? what? Yes. That's my view. But a lot of people still say that. No, no, no. In you may be that. onto something look, there. Technology, you know, the, the possibilities <laughs> of the human mind amaze me many times. It's incredible. I fly a lot, right? Yeah. yeah. But most times, I even though I've done it many times, when I fly, I'm still thinking, oh my days, I'm in a tube, how many thousand feet above, right. you know? And this was all done by humans, especially you see rows of people we Come don't know what's going to happen to us, but we're and all acting like it's normal. And yes, from now don't have Wi-Fi, right? Uh, what, you can be in here and be on you Wi-Fi, on check on the, on the internet. internet. And you know how you can prank people? Oh, okay. Oh, maybe I'm in the US. Oh, they think you're, <laughs> but you're communicating with them all the way until you get to their doorstep. Yeah. Technology is going places. And you might, how many years from now, that fly, that tube might be a drone. You might be flying with a jetpack yourself. Oh, wow. I mean, you, 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 there's, oh, there, wow. there's the UK, they are working, mm. their companies in our, I interviewed a, a, a startup company that is working on flying vehicles. Now, I know wow. there's going to be regulations. Mm. It's, it's just, the, what this conversation we're having now, Yes. PwC might be doing it in the metaverse. Right. In, in number of, it's just, so yeah, that's my view. I think yes. the whole spiritual, godly thing is tech. That's I mm. yeah I'm mm. a, I'm addicted to it I think it's incredible mm. and yeah so but no a lot of people don't uh, <laughs> I will take you up on this conversation <laughs> off air because I, I mean if I want to if I wanted to you know start on this I'm not sure we'll leave here today right so um, we have a tradition here right where our previous guest pops a question for the next guest okay right right and. Um, it's a mystery question. Okay. So the question is, do you actually think you are disrupting your field? Hmm. Yes. Think about it. I mean, okay. do you really have to think uh, yeah, about it? Well, I think in the way I produce my segments, it's, it's been hmm. you know disrupted by... I, do, I produce all my segments on WhatsApp. Can you believe that? No way. I send a message to the guests oh, on yeah? WhatsApp. Uh, whereby I ask them, I say, okay, this is what I want to talk about. Here's the talking points. Send messages to my graphics designer saying mm. this, and I itemize everything. You, you can bold mm. on WhatsApp, mm. you can use italics, you can mm. underline and all these things. Put all the graphics that I want I there. I actually didn't know all these things. It, look, yeah, I didn't and then know. <laughs> talk to my producer and say, this is the guest coming on. Mm. So we don't even have to speak mm. it. And then we are on groups. I mean, so the instant messaging fields mm. from your Meta's WhatsApp, mm. Microsoft and Teams, mm. Slack, Telegraph, that one, there's something, or Telegram, that one, mm. something is happening. That's an unregulated uh, uh, wasteland. So I don't know what's really going on. Okay. But, but yeah, so I think in the way that I, you know, produce news now, right. it's, it's, you almost don't even have to speak anymore. If you mm. take it back to how you used to produce news, where mm. you write and type mm. and bring this, mm. it, it's all, it's all. So mm. in terms of my most important items, I think if mm. I rank four of them, it's my mobile phone, mm. the keys to my apartment, mm 
keys to my car and my wallets. I mean, oh, I already okay. lost my wallet and I wasn't really worried because okay. I could just replace well, yeah. my phone. I'm transferring money. Right. I have my data on there. Yes. I'm communicating. Yes. I am producing my segments yes. for radio and television on my phone. Wow. So I, if there's any disruption there, I think mm. it's probably what instant messaging has brought. Communication. Mm. And then we're always, look, weekends, holidays, I'm still tuning because it's news, right? Yes. So I think my phone is my everything. I mean, it's, mm. I thought I was in a relationship. I think I'm in a, I'm, uh, in a relationship with my <laughs> With phone. Phone. So it's just it's just incredible yes. that that device, the way it's condensed yes. everything. Yeah. Uh, so if the disruption is happening, it's it's the news production and how you're yeah. just doing everything now on, on mobile devices. Very interesting, yeah. very interesting. I'm so sorry for keeping you away from your phone for the past one hour. <laughs> She's right here. Like, I'm looking at her. Oh, okay. She's sorry for you. Soon get back to, to him. <laughs> right. Um, and you know, disruption is interrelated. Right, and in that respect, we've asked you a question from mm. the previous guest. Yes. Now, what is one perspective you would like to get from our next interviewee? Uh, Mecca, I am fascinated about what COVID did mm. with respect to working from home. Right. Yes. And so, I this whole, I really think that. You know, personally, this where we are sitting now, years from now, I don't know what's going to happen to the office. Absolutely. Uh, so, my question for the next guest: If internet penetration, broadband penetration in Nigeria reaches ninety to ninety-five percent, from what did you say it is now? It's forty percent mm -hmm. now. If it increases, that's, that's kind of doubling. Or, or maybe, so, maybe, 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 it's maybe yeah, less 60, moderate. 60, okay. 65. Okay. If it improves significantly, let me just put it that way: If internet improve significantly right. in Nigeria. Mm. Will you continue to work from the office if you're not if you're if you're not already working from home yeah. now? What's your decision? Where will you well how will you be where will you be mm. talking? Work from home or from the office? Because mm. I think I think that's going to change. So I want it to be interesting to get mm. the opinions of everyone who are yes. in that field, how they feel about working from home or the office. Yes. And if internet improves, how that changes the landscape uh, for how we're productive. I mean, you couldn't have asked a more, <laughs> you know, interesting question in these times. Because I also think about working from home and how it has changed a lot of things, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, so for example, um, working from the office yeah. maybe drives other ancillary activities. So maybe the transporters, you know, the guys where you go for lunch, you Thank know, you. you know, all those yeah. other things that are connected to yeah. people actually moving and, and going out. But then, you know, it's convenient, it's easy, it's efficient. That's the disruption. In Lagos, That's the disruption. You know, where we live, right? where you yeah. spend, you know, hours yeah. in traffic. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, the traffic. <laughs> Thank yes, you for mentioning yes, that. You know, oh, so, my goodness. Um, yeah, for our next interview, we will be looking to see the kind of insights you give to this question and so obviously for the audience you need to stay tuned keep watching and see you know how we get responses from our next interview rotus it's been wonderful talking to you hey, i look. mean the past one hour has been very enlightening <laughs> for me personally and also i'm sure for our audience you guys at, at pwc with what you're doing you guys are the forefront of enlightenment oh, and wow. so i i respect what you all do big mm, fans mm. you know your 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 what the work you've done mm. how you guys have stayed at, at the front forefront yes. of trends yes the fantastic podcast keep doing your great work thank you yeah. thank you and you know we we like that you actually came to our experience center yes you know we tried to you know immerse people in technologies and also like you said um bring disruption to how people do business exactly. so what do you think about our, our space right here hey look the space is if it's it is futuristic if i can right. put it where they i right. like the design mm. it's very comfortable you know mm. everybody seems to really and look you, you you can yeah. tell from body language how people whether people are enjoying yes. their work and every time i come here people are smiling so you know yeah, the experience right. center is really nice you guys yeah. you guys did some great work here Thanks so much. We can't thank you enough. Appreciate um, it. Like I said, it's been a wonderful, you know, one hour thereabouts. Um, and with that, we come to the end of today's session. Uh, everybody, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Bye.